the slandering work of Satan. My name is Olushegun Mokuolu. Have you had any time when you question your faith? Have you had a moment when you feel this thing doesn't worth it? Have you had a time when it's like it doesn't make sense? And you ask yourself, what is all of this thing after all? If you have had such a moment, you have become a victim or you were a victim of the slandering work of Satan. I want to explain all of that today in the name of Jesus. You see the word to slander. Let me read it um, from a dictionary. What does it mean to slander? The action or crime of making a false spoken statement damaging to a person's reputation. You know, I can just go out now and say, oh, this pastor, I saw him sleeping with another woman. And that's not true. I've slandered him. I've destroyed his reputation. Some people may not listen to him again. This act of slandering people actually comes from the devil himself. The devil is the chief slanderer. And do you know the person the devil slanders the most? <laughs> God. God. And he does that in your mind. Let me give you an idea of how Satan slanders God. The devil can say something. Look at, imagine a young lady is not married. She has kept herself. She's a virgin. She's been so committed to serving God. The devil can come and say something like this. You are a virgin. You are not married. You have kept yourself. You are serving God. What kind of God is it that will not honor you? Look at those ladies who are sleeping about. This one has three children now. Do you really think there is any God anywhere? Do you think that this is your faith, this is your belief? Do you think it amounts to anything? Because people who don't believe, they are making progress. You that you claim to believe, you have remained stagnant. You see, when you have such thought in your mind, it is a satanic thought. He wants to slander God. And this thing I'm saying to you is so serious that some people question their faith. And some people end up becoming atheists. People who had once come to know the Lord, they will say they no longer believe that there is God. Because the devil comes to them and says something like this. Hmm. How can there be God? Look at all these innocent children in Africa being turned into child soldiers. How can there be a God? Look at these women who can't feed their children and they are watching their children die. See how human beings are suffering. Cancer, HIV, Ebola, COVID. And then and, and you say there is God. How can there be God? See how wicked people are prospering. How do you tell me there is God? Why did he create a world that you have pain? If he's indeed a God, why can't he do it so that none of us feels pain? When those kind of thoughts come to your mind, you may begin to question the integrity of God. It's a slandering word from Satan. I will soon show you from the Bible. When the devil makes you question the faith, what is it about this faith? Why would Jesus have need to come and die to save us? Why couldn't God save us without Jesus dying? Was it not God that created Adam and planted the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? If he knows all things, did he not know Adam will eat it? And if Adam will eat it, did he not know that human beings will be thrown into suffering? Why is it that this God wants us to suffer? Why will God allow the art to go through all of this pain when he could have prevented it? Why is God allowing this? And then now he's saying, you just need to believe in Jesus Christ and that you are going to live for it forever. And people are dying every day. Their body will decay. How will they live forever? What proof do you have that there is a soul? What proof do you have that we are not just animals? That once we die, everything is over. When you hear thought like this, it is a slander. It is a word spoken to damage the image of God. Satan does this from time to time and actively. 
if you don't know what you are doing, if you don't understand God, you will give room to those thoughts. You will begin to say to yourself, you know what you say? Ah, this is true. Do you know why you said this is true? Because the initial thought was not your thought. <laughs> but because you don't know how Satan operates, you think you are making intelligent thoughts. I will show you now how foolish those thoughts are. <laughs> Let's pick our Bible and look at Genesis chapter 3. Let's look at the devil in Genesis chapter 3. The devil at his best or at its almost best. <laughs> we'll see him at his best later on. This one at almost best. You know, you remember the devil came to the woman. Did God say you should not eat? He waited for the response of the woman. He wanted the woman to talk so that he could measure her wisdom and foolishness. Yeah. The woman said in, in verse 2, Okay, let's read from verse 1 to have a bit of context. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the feed which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Do you see the location of that tree? In the middle of the garden. So they see it every day. <laughs> it was not located in a corner. It was located where they could see it every single day. Let me just say this to you. You're going to have temptation every single day. But there is a path for victory. And that path is not in your strength. It is in God's strength. Now look at verse... For, and the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. What is that? God said, In the day you eat, you shall surely die. The serpent said, In the day you eat, you shall not surely die. He's showing that God is a liar. He's showing that God is not a faithful God. He was showing them that God is not a good God. He said, hmm, for God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. What do you think the devil is telling them? That God does not want them to know good and evil. God does not want them to be as the gods. He was slandering God. He was making them to feel bad about God. He called God a liar. That's why you don't believe the word of God. You too, you're asking yourself, but did God really mean it? If he says flee fornication, did he really mean it like that? If he says that all liars that shall have their part in the lake of hell, Jesus said that. But the devil will ask you, did he really say that? And he will tell you it is not true. When a man dies, he's dead. We are not giving any account to anybody. That's the devil. That's the slandering work of the devil. Did you know what the devil did here was to slander God? Was to make God look bad. <laughs> Guys, what are you people doing? This man does not want you to enjoy. This man does not want you to have fun. He's telling you that if you eat, you will die. It's a lie. You are not going to die. He knows when you eat it, you will be better off. But he doesn't want you to be better off. That's how we feel. We feel that God is wicked to us. That why is God subjecting us to wickedness? A good God. They do know the Bible says God is love. Because you don't understand what it means to say God is love. That's why you feel that. You think you have a sense of love that is greater than God. You think you understand what love is more than God. You think that you love people who are suffering more than God. You don't. <laughs> You don't have an idea of the love of God. He, he created love. He himself is love. So the love that you have is a drop in an ocean. Imagine putting your finger in an ocean and bringing it out. And then a drop drops. Pim! That is the love that you have. That entire ocean is God's love. 
Now imagine you are now claiming to know love more than the entire ocean. Let me show you something. In Luke chapter 14, you will see that you will see devil now at his best in slandering God. Luke chapter 4, rather. Um, let's, yes. Now, before, let me, before I read this, let me give you the context. Jesus had just been baptized. And God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That's what God has said. That's very clear. Absolute. Look at the devil. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. If thou be the son of God. God just said, This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. He said, If thou be the son of God. What a contradiction. That means God is a liar. Proof to me. If God is truthful. The same thing he did in Genesis. You can see it being repeated here. Making God look terrible. How could you be hungry and you are the son of God? How could you be hungry? Should the son of God, what kind of God is that? That will subject his own son to, anger, to hunger. When everything around him can turn, can turn to barbecue chicken. Everything around him can, can turn to some mesmerizing steak. And then you are hungry, the son of God. That is a slandering walk of Satan. Brethren, know it today. The devil will slander God in your heart. Let me say something to you. When the Bible says God is just, God is true, God is kind, God is faithful. If you don't understand these things, you will question God. You know the problem is this. He said, my ways are not your ways. That is what he said about himself. You must first look at what God said about himself. Your sins are too difficult to comprehend God. They are too small rather to comprehend God. We can never comprehend God, even in eternity. We will never. We are talking of somebody who had lived from eternity past. You know the meaning of eternity past. We are putting past there just to show that uh, it's been coming because it is eternity. Eternity is, is, is timeless. In eternity, you can't count. You can't say tomorrow or yesterday. In eternity, it is always day. Day one. And that day one had no beginning. And that day one has no ending. And you think in your own small brain, you are wiser than him? Let me read what he said about it. Let me read what the scripture said more about God. Romans chapter 11 and verse 33. Romans 11, 33. <clears throat> He says, all the depth of the riches, both of wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgment and his ways past finding out. Let's read it from various translations. King James says, oh, no, sorry, New Living Translation, no, NIV, NIV says, all the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable is judgment and his path beyond tracing out. Let's read New Living. It says, Oh, how great are God's riches and wisdom and knowledge. How impossible it is for us to understand his decisions and his ways. You must know your limitations. There are things you will not understand, but you must just go by it. How many of you understand the principles that make airplane to fly? You probably don't know. How can somebody put something three-story building in the air and it's flying? And it's flying. And you are confident that it's not going to come down. And you sit in it. Can you explain how our plane works? Can you explain how the pilot locates where to land? Yes, you fly plane. 
and that is something created by human beings. Some human beings understand it. They all know the principles. You don't know it, but you fly it. That's something made by a human being like you, with the same brain like you. How much more something that is divine? Look at the sun. Can you hang the sun there to be producing power all these years? And it has not gotten exhausted. What makes the rain to stay in the cloud and drop in trickles rather than just fall down at once? These are things that you can see with your eyes, yet you don't understand it. How shall we explain them to you? Things that you don't under, you cannot even see. How shall we explain a God that created your brain to you? He said his ways are past finding out. All the depth of his wisdom and his knowledge. How can you comprehend him? If he says he is just, he is just. Like they say, give him the benefit of the doubt. Wait until eternity to prove whether God is true or is not true. <laughs> but you know what? He himself has given you a way to know. He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You have not tasted. You say the Lord is not good. He said the only way you can know my goodness is to taste me. Have you tasted him? You see food, you said it's not sweet, but you didn't taste it. I said it's not sweet. Have you not seen food that you think you won't like by, your, by sight? But when you got there, you said, who made this? Please give me more. Because you have tasted it. He said, oh, taste and see. That is the way God wants you to experiment him. You must taste and see that he's good. Brethren, nobody is as loving as God. Even though there, is, there are things we may not understand. You see, once you settle it in your heart that he's a just God, you know, ask yourself, Sodom and Gomorrah, were there not children there? In the days of Noah, were there not pregnant women? Were there not children there? Did they die? If they died, what were they dying for? Was it for their sin? A pregnant woman that died with her baby. What did that baby die for? Is it for his or her sin? Has that baby sinned? But when you understand that God is just, you will say to yourself, though I do not understand this situation, but I know that he's a righteous judge and he has done what is right. Ultimately, God will do what is just and right. He gave you your sense of justice. That thing you call justice, God gave you a sense. And that brain that is wonderful to you now, one day it will rot, termite, ant. They will all eat it. They will eat it. Warm, they will eat it. That brain that you are using to question an eternal God, it will be eaten up. Who are you then to question God? Believe what he has said about you. See, never argue against the devil. If he shows you all of these things, just quote him one single verse. God is love. God is just. His ways is just. He's enough. Just tell him his ways is just. I don't need to know it. I don't know how a plane flies, but I'm, I'm ready to fly a plane. If you, if you bring ticket, now I'm going to fly. I don't know how it flies. They say it's aerodynamic. They say the angle of the wing, you know, and then the engine bringing in cold air and pushing hot air, you know, all of those things combine a lot of factors and then speed. <laughs> they say it's there. I don't really understand it, but I will be there. Look at a ship that can be as high as seven, eight story buildings, some even higher than that. And they will be on water. And yet, if you drop this pen on water, it probably sink. And then a ship bigger than houses will stay on the sea and float. Human being created that. You can't comprehend that. But you now want to comprehend the God that says, As the heaven is far from the earth, so is my way far from your ways. Let me read to you Proverb, uh, sorry, Job 9.10. Job chapter 9. Verse 10. He said, which doth grace things past finding out? Yea, 
wonders without numbers. Let's look at it from various translations. Let's look at it. NIV says, he performs wonders that cannot be fatumed, miracles that cannot be counted. Hmm. Wonders. You know what so something is? Wonder. He does great things too marvelous to understand. He performs countless miracles. That's New Living Translations. Good News says, we cannot understand the great things he does. And to his miracles, there is no end. Contemporary English version says, of all the miracles God works, we cannot understand one. <laughs> How can you understand this God? You can't understand it. He's as he, so we only know the little he wants us to know. The Bible said, they that come to God must believe that he is. You see, believe. You must believe God and trust God. Two things. You must believe him. You must trust him. If he says he's just, you must trust that he's just. And you will eventually see that he's just. He said, oh, taste and see. I've discovered that I am actually so unjust, ungodly. I'm actually very wicked. But I used to think that I'm so loving, that I care about people. That why can't God care about these people? He has all the power. But I realized that I was actually wicked. Because I didn't understand the plan of God. I thought that, oh, maybe I love the people. I don't want them to go through pain. I don't want them to suffer. When you understand God, you will realize that you are the one that actually does not understand justice. You are the one that does not understand law. He is a loving God. He will do everything right. There is no unrighteousness in God. It's not like you and I that we have unrighteousness or we have done unrighteousness at a point or the other in our lives. Not so with God. Stand firm by the word of God. The devil will come at you. He will make Christianity to be senseless to you. Pray in tongues. You are just praying in tongues. You are just praying in tongues. What are you praying in tongues for? You are just speaking. You don't understand what you are saying. That's what the devil will say to you. You are just praying. You are not seeing the person you are praying to. You are just praying. And you believe he will answer you. <laughs> he will answer because he says so. Say so we have this confidence that when we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. As I'm speaking, he's hearing. As he's seated in glory, in light and approachable, he's hearing. As you're watching this, he knows. Don't let the devil slander God in your heart. The devil is a wicked devil. <laughs> the serpent, Satan, the dragon. He's a wicked devil. He will discredit God in your heart. He will make God look like he's a, he's a wicked father. Everything points towards that God is a loving father. Just take nature for example. Look at how delicious fruits are. Mango has its own taste. Apple has its own taste. Banana has its own taste. Plantain has its own taste. Guava has its own taste. Berries have their own taste. Everything tastes different. Everything tastes nice. Look at the air we breathe. Look at how beautiful. Look at our body. Look at the body of a woman. Masterpiece. Because of the beauty of a woman, some men cannot live straight life. Just because of that beauty. That it took God a few minutes or seconds to just put sand together from one rib and put together. Look, see, look, at, look at beautiful. Look at nature. Look at the streams. Look at the animals. And one of the things I pray to God for is that I will be on the ocean one day to witness, to, to you know, to just to just lift up my voice to just worship him in a, in a unique environment. When you see the whales, the seals, when you see the endless water, when you go outer space, there is another planet. At least we have sent rovers to Mars. We have landed there. We have seen pictures of another planetary body that is different from ours. Look at the beautiful things God created. God didn't create God. 
We created gun. He created, he put materials there we can use to make good things. Look at how beautiful family is. Look at how beautiful life is. So you think a wicked God is behind all of this? That gives the moon at night, the sun in the day, decorate our, our sky with stars? Do we see? What exactly does, does the star do? What exactly do they do? They only beautify our night. And if you know their distance and their size, it's incomprehensible that a loving father did this for, all of, for us all. He did all of this. Don't let Satan slander God. God is good. God is faithful. In fact, when we say God is good, we say all the times. God is good all the times. God is faithful. Don't give up on your faith. Let me tell you this. The devil knows this. When Peter was about to sin, Jesus said, I've prayed for you. But Peter still went ahead to sin. Yeah, Jesus said, I've prayed for you. He said that the prayer of Jesus didn't work. No, Jesus said something. He said, I have prayed that your faith does not fail. Jesus knew Peter may sin, Peter may fall, but if his faith does not fail, he will still rise up and accomplish the purpose of God. The devil wants to defeat your faith. That is why the greatest attack of faith of, of the devil is on your faith. That's his greatest attack. Once you lose faith, you are defeated. If you still hold on to your faith, I'm telling you, you are still standing, you still have hope with God. But once you lose that faith, that's the end. You can become an atheist. You can completely lose it. Never lose your faith. That's what the devil is, is trying to do. He wants to break your faith. He wants you to lose your faith. But Jesus said, I've prayed for you that your faith does not fail. I pray for you that you are watching this. Your faith will not fail in the name of Jesus. Every attempt of Satan to make your faith fail has failed now in the mighty name of Jesus. We also pray for you that your faith will not fail in the name of Jesus. God is good all the time and forever we will love him we will serve him forever and ever he's an eternal god somebody said though he slay me yet i will trust in him hallelujah that's the god we serve i don't care what happened i'm going to love him i don't care what happened we're going to believe in him we're going to trust in him till the end of age and we magnify his name alone forever and we declare once again god is good god is good forever and ever Amen. Hallelujah. My name is Olushe Gumukolu. Our contact details are in the description below. Please feel free to use our phone number or email address or any of our social media handles to reach us. Thank you. God bless you. And I pray that your faith will not fail in Jesus' name. God bless you.